The following podcast is brought to you by the Station of the Cross. Thank you for listening. You could have read the book already or written it yourself. You're a good interviewer. You've got good questions. <laughs> <laughs> You've got good comments more so than most. When you talk about emerging adulthood, 27, 28, in most periods of history, the majority of people were dead by then. <laughs> so I think they miscalculated. I would do this for free. I hope my pastor's not hearing me, but this, it's, it's, what, it's what we do and it's what we're called to do. Both socialism and communism have been explicitly condemned by popes, starting with Leo XIII in the 19th century. Praise be Jesus Christ. This is Father Robert McTagg of the Society of Jesus, your daily host for the Catholic Current, where we plug into the power of Jesus Christ and his Catholic Church. You're listening to us on the Station of the Cross Catholic Radio Network and the iCatholic Radio app, where we proclaim the fullness of truth with clarity and charity. As always, let's start with prayer. In the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Almighty God, through the intercession of St. Ignatius Loyola, we ask that you pour forth your Holy Spirit upon us, a spirit of discernment that we might hear your voice and obey your command. In the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Well, friends, we have a difficult and painful topic to talk about today, the tragic and ugly reality of human trafficking. And here to talk to us about what it, what it means, what causes it, what the effects are, and what can be done about it is an expert, a licensed clinical social worker and director of the Freedom House in San Francisco, Charles Bauer. Welcome to the Catholic Current. Well, oh, thank you for having me today, Father. Charles, let's start with a definition of terms. What What do you mean when you speak of human trafficking? So, uh, yeah, what we mean when, when we talk about, about human trafficking is we're, we're talking about, uh, in, in a traditional sense, normally when, when you're talking about prostitution, you're talking about, you would use the word John and, and, and then, and then uh, prostitute. So when you talk about human trafficking, we're talking about young women, usually under the age of 15, anywhere between the age of 10 and 15, uh, and, and it's widespread. And, and these, basically these women are uh, kidnapped and abducted into the sex trade where they are forced, uh, against their will, obviously, to, to perform sexual acts uh, for men that, that are essentially buying them. So, uh, so this would be you would a prostitution, uh, sexual slavery. I, I imagine the pornography institute would be involved in some way. The pornography institute can, can be involved. It, it's also uh, there's also a, a number of, of websites that facilitate this, and there's a lot of legal issues going on around around this right now. Uh, so websites like Backpages.com, uh, even even Craigslist. Uh, so it's not explicitly just pornography. This, this is a, a wider, a wider ring. So what, what are what are the sources of human trafficking? Let's let's restrict it first of all to the United States. What what are the sources of human trafficking? Where are these poor young females coming from? Yeah. So uh, that's that's a good question, Father. So uh, oftentimes we're when we're talking about these these, these women that are victims and 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 ergos, people that survive human trafficking oftentimes they they are uh, they're vulnerable they're oftentimes vulnerable people sometimes uh, in many cases we have we have uh folks that are migrants that are coming refugees migrants that are that are already vulnerable and being picked up or 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 you know what happens in every town in America you have vulnerable young young women that are that are, are, are are involved with, with with families that are that are broken that do, that are runaways uh, that have fa- families and parents that are that are abusive that are that are addicted to to to, medi- uh, to, to drugs so th- th- it's oftentimes very vulnerable people so the the human trafficking industry seems to prey upon those who are at risk of kidnapping, uh, abduction, etc. And uh, it seems that there is no one who ordinarily you'd be expected to protect them, a, a husband, a father, a grandfather, uh, parents, brothers. Uh, so the family network has broken down. And I imagine that these, are, these are, are young girls who don't have a lot of community ties to, say, school or neighborhood or churches. Is that correct? 
Well, yeah, I, I, absolutely correct. So it, it, uh, there are many cases. I, I have a, a, a person in mind right now who, whose father, this young woman, who, who, who was removed from her mother because the mother was abused and a drug, a drug dealer, drug addict, yada, yada. And the father, the father was the one that was trafficking her out, uh, that, that beat, beat, beat her to, to a bloody pulp and then trafficked her out uh, as many as 15 times in a day. That she was, she was being literally the one we talked that about. Was, that's that's I, 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 humanly, that's beyond my, my my comprehension. A that any one human being can do that to another human being, and secondly, that someone with a soul can do that to his own child. That's I mean, that's humanly, that's impossible for for me to conceive. Now, can you tell us some about your background and how you got into this work? Yeah, so uh, like you said uh, on, on the uh, intro here, is that I am a licensed clinical social worker, and for a while, I, when I when I first, uh, I'm originally from Philadelphia, and I ended up moving out to, to the Bay, and, I, and 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 finding a job working uh, at the Freedom House, working with with young women that are trafficked, and, and I was doing some. At first, I was doing some work with migrants, and then I, I found out that it's a real issue. In, in every town in America, it's not just in the slums. It's not just. It's not in places you would expect. They, 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 I mean, they, these are there. There are predators that are that are that are online and that are in, in, in neighborhoods in, in uh, that are that are preying on these young women. And so I, I guess that, that's how I got involved with this. I guess I, I actually started volunteering as a, as a, you know, doing the therapy part of it, and and eventually the the the, the powers that be at the, the Freedom House said, "Well, how would you like to be the director of our program?" And then I was flattered. I just thought, well, okay, let's go for it. This, I mean, you're, you're seeing unspeakable human tragedy. I mean, you're dealing with people who, who won't be fully healed in this life. I, obviously, you're not doing this for the money and the glamour. I mean, you don't care for care for victims for, of trafficking in order to get rich or to become popular. Uh, what motivates you to do this work, and what sustains you? So yeah, so for me, what sustains me is is is, is I, I I have I have a love for Jesus. I have a love for Jesus Christ, and and I want to be with with the people who Jesus Jesus loves, and and, and the people that that are there that I we put Pope Francis call them the the wounds of Christ, and so I, I want to enter into that, and that's this is where I find Jesus in in in, in those who are vulnerable and those who are who have been hurt and victimized and are in pain, and and, and so that's. And that's what that's what sustains me is knowing that I that I'm, I'm that I'm with Jesus and I and I'm and I, and I don't want him to be alone with these people. Well, you you know, Charles, um, the founder of the Jesuit Saint Ignatius Loyola said, "Be especially alert for those who have no one if they don't have you," and you have to be alert to where Christ is suffering. So. If nothing else, you can suffer with them so that they don't have to suffer alone. Uh, what kind of services are, are offered to uh, vulnerable people in need and people who've been victimized? What's what's offered by your organization? Yeah, so our, our organization, we we actually do uh, full full housing for these folks. They, we 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 have a, a unit that actually goes out seeking young women that are being trafficked currently, and, and we, we we track them down and we, and we take them out of the ring. And, and then my my part of it is, is that I, I do the therapy, I do the housing, I, I do I work with the families. We do casework A to Z. So we we get them. It, it, I do the mental health part, but we also there's there's physical health, right? Because they're uh, while they're being trafficked, they're literally being beaten to to, to a pulp. And, and 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 the mental health part of it is that the trafficker. I, I often want to call the trafficker the rapist. The, the, this person. Has has these young women uh, in the mindset that that they no longer have any human they no longer have any human value they're now just a product and, and right. they're the they're a mere they're, commodity to be bought and sold and and discarded and, a, you know John Paul said the the opposite of love isn't hate uh, it it's use uh, what does a success story look like for your program oh goodness. So a success story is, you know, we, we oftentimes these, these women that, that, that have been victimized and, and are survivors after the fact, oftentimes 
they, they have full-blown PTSD, post-traumatic stress disorder. Mm-hmm. And, and so oftentimes we have to have them see a psychiatrist to get some medication. And, and, and so success would be that, that we get them, and it's a long, arduous process, uh, but we get them to a point where they see themselves not just as a commodity, a commodity but as intrinsically valuable and intrinsically loved and loved by, 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 by their family, by their, by, by, by their, their friends, and ultimately by Christ, by God. And, and, and so from and there, that, that they, they can... I'm sorry, go ahead. But I, I was going to say, yeah, no, so I, I was just going to say, and, and that, that's just a, a long, long process. Some people... You know, it, it can happen in a few months, but we, we you know, we've housed we've housed young women for, for years that struggle with this. That it's just long and painful, and 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 you just have to accompany them and walk with them and walk with them through this. Right, because they they have received uh, some scars that are not visible, but are very real. We are talking about the tragedy of human trafficking in the United States with Charles Bauer, a social worker who works at Freedom House in San Francisco with survivors of human trafficking. When we come back, we're going to talk about the causes and the effects of human trafficking, and we want you to be part of the conversation. Get on the line now to call us at one 877 511 or text us the same number that's one eight seven seven five one one five four eight three. Stay with us, we'll be right back. The Liturgy of the Hours is prayed three times a day on the Station of the Cross at 5 a.m., 3 p.m., and 9.30 p.m. Eastern. The Liturgy of the Hours is a meditative and efficacious way to foster habitual prayer. It is the daily prayer of the Church, prayed throughout the world by priests, religious, and laity. For details about each hour and more information about the Liturgy of the Hours, visit thestationofthecross.com. St. John Paul II said, It is Jesus you seek when you dream of happiness. He is waiting for you when nothing else you find satisfies you. He is the beauty to which you are so attracted. It is He who provokes you with that thirst for fullness that will not let you settle for compromise. Deep down, we know that things can't make us happy, but sometimes we struggle in letting go of them. Do you have a vehicle that you really should get rid of? We'd be so grateful to receive it, to further our mission of sharing Christ with the world over the airwaves, online, and through mobile devices. Consider helping the Station of the Cross by donating your old vehicle. Vehicle. To find out more and to donate, please visit thestationofthecross.com or call 1-866-628-CARS. That's thestationofthecross.com or 1-866-628-2277. We offer a variety of call shows, devotionals, and news programs to help you grow in your faith and get the Catholic perspective on world events. Find out more about each of our shows by visiting thestationofthecross.com. You'll have access to an interactive programming grid where you can click on a program to learn more about it. All live shows are even highlighted in yellow, so they're easy to identify. Check out our interactive programming grid today at thestationofthecross.com. You're listening to the Station of the Cross Catholic Radio Network. Call in to the Catholic Current this hour at 1-877-511-5483. Each morning, the Catholic Current sends out a short survey on the topic for today's show so that you can share your thoughts and any questions you might have. This is a great way to participate, especially if you aren't able to call in live. A few of the responses will be read over the air to add to the discussion. So make sure you sign up to receive our emailed survey at thestationofthecross.com. 
Praise be Jesus Christ. This is Father Robert McTague of the Society of Jesus, your daily host for The Catholic Current, where we plug into the power of Jesus Christ and His Catholic Church. You're listening to us on the Station of the Cross Catholic Radio Network and the iCatholic Radio app, where we proclaim the fullness of truth with clarity and charity. Our difficult topic today is human trafficking. Our expert guest is Charles Bauer, licensed clinical social worker, director of Freedom House in San Francisco. If you just joined us, you should know that at the top of the hour, we began our conversation with a discussion of the nature of human trafficking. Uh, In short, young women uh, abducted and sold into slavery and prostitution. In this segment, we're going to look at the causes and the effects of human trafficking. Uh, Charles, what is the relationship between uh, human trafficking and the issue of immigration, a very hotly contested topic in the United States? A number of our listeners have uh, sent, uh, uh, sent us messages saying, is there a link between the call to open borders and an increase in trafficking in the United States? What's your take on this? Uh, so my take is we have, specifically with unaccompanied minors that are coming in and, and, and through, the, through, the, through our borders, they're already vulnerable as they come, and even if you're not an unaccompanied minor, you're coming with your family, right? So, uh, oftentimes, these, these women are being, yeah, you know, these women are being being violated at the border. They're being violated on their way here. So we have this caravan that's coming from Mexico, and, and what you find is that uh, many many women will actually go on birth control before they leave to come to the border because they expect to be to be violated on, on mm. numerous occasions. And then they get to the border, and there's been a number of reports that we have uh, border officers, you know, officers on the border that are that are also violating these women, and then in detention, and then and then we finally get them out of detention and and and, and in, into the court system and get their case started, and and they're released, and and they're even more vulnerable because they they don't speak the language, they don't know the culture, they don't they just don't know, and, and but specifically with human trafficking. We have young women that are that are, but most of them are unaccompanied minors that are coming and and uh, excuse me, not not most of the migrants. Most most of the young women that I deal with that have been that have been human trafficked. There, there's a good a good majority of them that 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 are unaccompanied minors and they come fleeing fleeing violence and and they get run up into this ring because they're already vulnerable and, and and they need money they need a place to stay they need this they need that they have a lot of needs and, and so that, that that plays a huge role into it uh, Charles, I, I know that you're—I mean, you're not a politician, you're—you're you're not a lawyer, but you have a lot of face-to-face contact that most of us don't have. Uh, what would be different if uh, the the say the southern borders were more secure? What would that do to the flow of human trafficking in the United States? Uh, well, currently in the United States, so even if we were to close that border, if we were to close the border off and say, okay, we're, we're going to secure this thing, we're going to let less people in. Uh, you know, currently in the United States, they're, they're, in the United States of America, I, I, I believe the estimate is about 60,000 people right now are being trafficked as we speak. And, and believe it or not, so there are, there is a, a segment of people that are, that are from coming across the border that are being brought into the, into the ring of human trafficking, and that—that that, there's no mm-hmm. doubt about that. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I—I I, I would argue, I, I'd probably a quarter of that number would be, be 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 that. But we also have we also have a lot of young women that are that are here in the United States that are born here that are in suburban America that are being brought brought into this, and it's because they're vulnerable. It's because they're 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 they're, they're coming from abusive situations with their, their families. They're running they're running away. Or, you know, they oftentimes look at on social media platforms such as Facebook, et cetera, et cetera, and, and they'll meet someone and, and, and not, someone's not paying attention, whoever the guardian would be. Right. And they meet someone and then they meet this person, in, 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 you know, face to face. And what happens is, and I've heard this many times, what happens is the, 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 the would be trafficker, uh, it, is sweet and kind and nice, yada yada yada, and and, and eventually he, this this man turns on them and and, and turns and says, "Now you're going to do what I, what I want you to do." Uh, so, and, uh, if and I understand you correctly, then 
you know, there there are vulnerable young women being brought across the border for nefarious purposes. Even if the border were made secure, then that wouldn't be, if you will, the solution. It may be a, contribu a, a contributing factor to uh, a solution, but there are uh, young women growing up in abusive situations who are prey to predators either in person or, or online and it seems to be an easy way out to a difficult situation and then they go from the frying pan uh, into the fire. Would you say then that part of what contributes to uh, the vulnerable females being abducted is the fact that the family structure of the United States is not in good shape these days? Uh, the fa indeed. So the family structure in the United States is it is is terrible, and and what they what I think they say eighty six percent of the young women that get abducted. It's almost ninety percent, right? Eighty six percent of these women, the young women that get abducted into these, are living in a single parent home, most of the time without fathers, uh, which is just absurd. Well, you know, you, when you work in, in social work and in, in the social sciences, I mean, I, I've read in a number of sources that one of the best predictors for nearly every social malady is to be raised without a father. Is, is that your experience? Is your research and experience uh, confirm that? Absolutely. Uh, yeah, I just, yeah, absolutely. 86% uh, of these young women that are, that are being abducted are fathers, or they don't have a father in the home, or they have a father that's abused them, or they have a father that, that's raped them. Or they have a father. I, you know, I have a you know a young woman that I know of that, that uh, in a very similar situation, fatherless, right? She had no father, and she's living with the mother, and the mother had had uh, clearly had anger issues, and, and and as punishment will take her daughter uh, at, at the age of eight and nine, and, and as punishment will put her in the dryer and turn the dryer on. I mean, this is this is this is the kind of lunacy we're talking about. Right. Uh, that's uh, that's it's psychotic and and it's uh, and it's diabolical. What what are the effects of those poor souls who've gotten caught up in in this uh, this moral meat grinder? Uh, what are, what are some of their typical symptoms? What are some of the typical symptoms? Of, uh, well, clearly um, withdrawal socially. If so if you're mm -hmm. a teacher and you're in a school, see a child that's that's, that's withdrawn socially. Or that has shown signs of abuse, right? So showing that they have they, they they have bruises on them, or or just showing the general signs of depression, uh, or that they're always stressed, or that they're 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 oftentimes uh, high strung because they're they're always living under stress, and now they're in school, and this this is supposed to be a safe place away from what is actually supposed to be actual safe place, which is their home. Uh, Charles, are, are you there or have we lost you? It sounds like we've lost Charles and we're going to have our engineer reconnect with him uh, in just a moment. Meanwhile, let's talk about uh, some of the, what co contributes to the vulnerability of children in the United States. As we said before, if the borders were secure, that would staunch uh, a large uh, flow of of those who are, are vulnerable, the unaccompanied minors and so on. But we also have to look at the dissolution of family life. Uh, the natural protectiveness and solicitude that parents have uh, for their children. Oh, do we have Charles back yet, uh, Mr. Engineer? Our engineer is working on it, so I will continue. Uh, when the family is frayed, when the natural protectiveness and love is not available for children who have been brought into the world, and I would go so far as to say when there is a lack of faith, when people don't see children as a gift from God, then we're in trouble. And I can't help but think of that wonderful phrase from uh, Charles Dickens, who said, It is no small thing when they who are so fresh from God love us. And we have Charles back. Charles, are you with us now? I am back. I am okay, back. Well, you, 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 I hope you missed it. I hope, hope you didn't miss it. I was waxing eloquent in, in your absence. Um, one of the things we were talking about b before you, you dropped off for, for just a moment uh, was the, the ill effects of, of being caught up in this uh, horrible meat grinder of um, 
of trafficking, and we talked about you know some of the the, the signs and symptoms. What would the long term effects be? Uh, well, c- certainly the long term effects. Uh, you know, these are these are ills and pains and scars and, and wounds that these women will live with for the rest of their lives. This is mm. this, this will affect the way they parent. This will affect the way they they. They relate to their their would be husbands. This this will affect all aspects of their lives. Mm-hmm. So it, it's not just a, a physical matter, but the, it's it's emotional. Um, it's it, emotional. It, it's spiritual. This will, sure, this will also affect the way, for example, that they 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 will relate to to, to God and to Jesus. Right. This is this this is a very real. Um, uh, visceral reaction to uh, right. I, I know that I've taught philosophy classes and theology classes at the undergraduate and graduate level about the problem of evil, and very often it's talked about, you know, theoretically it, it's a notional problem. It's a problem on paper, but for these poor souls, uh, this is about scars and nightmares and and, and broken bones. Uh, what kind of spiritual help do they need? Jeez. So beyond the, the, the beyond the the therapy that we provide at the Freedom House and and, and in other organizations, right? Beyond that, they, they need to know that they can trust again. They need to know that they that someone is going to be with them and will walk with them and be with them, no matter what they do. And oftentimes, as a sort of an effect, and and, and it's typical also in PTSD victims, and that is that that they 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 they're really. Um, they're really hard to work with because they're they're, they're going to push the limits. They're going to push your boundaries. They're they're, they're going to push you and see how how far how far will you walk with me? And you just have to be consistent. You just have to to continue to just assure them that you're always there. That you're always there. That you're always there. And, and that, because and that, understandably, that they they have fear of abandonment and, and fear of betrayal. And if you show goodwill, they might consider you too good to be true. Uh, which is exactly what the, what what happens, right? And that's. And so oftentimes you'll see that young women that get, get trapped into this will also, they'll, re, they'll, they'll go back into it after a couple of weeks of being out. Oh, what, what a nightmare. What a nightmare. We are talking about the, the horror of human trafficking with Charles Bauer, social worker director of Freedom House in San Francisco. When we come back, we're going to talk about the role of the church in helping those who are uh, suffering suffering in human trafficking and how good intentions might not be enough. We'll want you to be part of the conversation. Get on the line now at one 511 5483 or text us the same number at one 511 5483 Stay with us. We'll be right back. ever wonder where God is in your suffering or what his will is for you as you struggle in the faith? Each weekday from 10 to 11 a.m. Eastern, the Station of the Cross brings you Heart to Heart with Mother Miriam, a program to inspire you and offer solutions to many of life's challenges. Mother Miriam is a Catholic nun whose humor and holiness, along with years of theological training, bless all who are in need of encouragement and practical advice. Listen on your local Station of the Cross affiliate or on our free iCatholic Radio mobile app. That's Heart to Heart with Mother Miriam, weekdays from 10 to 11 a.m. Eastern on the Station of the Cross. Prayer of Deliverance. Almighty God and Father, we beg Thee through the intercession and help of the Archangels, St. Michael, Raphael, and Gabriel, for the deliverance of our brothers and sisters who are enslaved by the evil one from anxiety, sadness, and obsessions. We implore Thee, deliver us, O Lord. From hatred, fornication, and envy. We implore Thee, deliver us, O Lord. From thoughts of jealousy, rage, and death. We implore Thee, deliver us, O Lord. From every thought of suicide and abortion. We implore Thee, deliver us, O Lord. 
from every form of sinful sexuality. We implore thee, deliver us, O Lord. From every division in our family and every harmful friendship. We implore thee, deliver us, O Lord. From every sort of spell, malefice, witchcraft, and every form of the occult. We implore thee, deliver us, O Lord. Thou who said, Peace I leave with you, my peace I give unto you, grant that through the intercession of the Virgin Mary we may be liberated from every demonic influence and enjoy thy peace always. In the name of Christ our Lord, amen. Tune in weekdays from 6 to 7 a.m. Eastern for Sermons for Everyday Living, a program that brings you real sermons from real priests on topics important to you and your faith. Visit thestationofthecross.com for details. You're listening to The Station of the Cross Catholic Radio Network. Call in to the Catholic Current this hour at 1-877-511-5483. Shortly after the show, visit our page for The Catholic Current at thestationofthecross.com. You'll find a link to today's episode page where you can view Father McTague's show resources and today's podcast. Praise be Jesus Christ. This is Father Robert McTague of the Society of Jesus, your daily host for The Catholic Current, where we plug into the power of Jesus Christ and His Catholic Church. You're listening to us on the Station of the Cross Catholic Radio Network and the iCatholic Radio app, where we proclaim the fullness of truth with clarity and charity. Our difficult topic, our difficult topic today has to do with human trafficking. Our guest is licensed clinical social worker Charles Bauer, director of Freedom House of San Francisco. At the top of the hour, we talked about the nature of human trafficking, young women being abducted and sold into slavery and prostitution. We looked at its effects uh, spiritually, morally, physically, uh, the lingering effects of post-traumatic stress disorder. And in this segment, we're going to look at what is the role of the church? How can the church contribute? And are good intentions enough? Charles, we take a survey every morning of our listeners. And one listener wrote in that if the church really wanted to help uh, people and protect them from the vulnerability of, of being involved in human trafficking, they should send more missionaries to uh, troubled lands rather than uh, open borders and, and bring people in uh, without, the, without the rule of law. What's your response to that suggestion? Well, you know, my response to that suggestion, well, simply is that the problem is in our backyard, right? It's not just, it's not just overseas. It's not just somewhere in, for say, Mexico or in Asia. And, and it's there, but we have it here, and it's a real problem here. So I agree, yes, we can send missionaries there. But ultimately, we have to start addressing what's happening here. Uh, and yes, so like we talked about in the last segment, uh, certainly some of the migration, some of the uh, unaccompanied minors, for example, uh, certainly that plays a factor into it. But even if we were to eliminate that completely 100%, we still have something like 35,000 young women born here in the United States that are being trafficked currently today. That that's a mind-boggling statistic. That's that's the size of a small city, of young women being uh, exploited and, and treated as as commodities, as as chattel, as, as animals. It's uh, it, it it's breathtaking. If you were going to have a congregation or a parish or religious community say, "Hey, we want to make this a priority in terms of uh, detection and prevention," where would a community start? Where uh, I'm, I'm sorry. So where, where would a community start as far as uh, right? If, if a religious community or a parish or congregation said, "This is a nightmare. It's scandalous that we're dealing with this in the United States." Uh, how you know? And we want to make it a priority. You know, how would a congregation get started in terms of of being informed right. of of detection and prevention? Yeah. So I think it starts with education, right, and understanding that this isn't just a problem overseas. But it's, and it's not just a problem in our inner cities and in our slums. This is a problem that's happening in, in, in the richest neighborhoods in America, where you would expect it to be safe, and this is happening there. This is, this is happening so, uh, and, and, but in, in education and, and, and changing our mindset from uh, that, it, that it's just okay that I can just write a check to organizations and that, that's going to solve the problem and really change our minds into, well, I have to really get involved in this. And, and changing our minds into 
it may, I may have to get dirty. I may have to get my hands dirty. And, and, and just getting educated about the facts of, of, of human trafficking. All right, so that, that's a place to start. And speaking in terms of, of education, we have a caller who, who has a, a question for you. Karen from Rochester, New York. Welcome to the Catholic Current. What's your question? Hello, Father. Um, I am coming to the discussion a little late, and I hope I didn't miss something important. But if we're talking about human trafficking, um, what about boys? What about um, prostitution rings of boys? Okay, that's a good question, uh, Karen. Glad, glad that you asked. Charles, we've been talking mostly about females. Are, are there young males getting caught up in this, too? Uh, so, thank you for your question, Karen. Uh, yeah, so there certainly is, a, and I don't know off the top of my head what the statistic is for young men that are getting involved, get, getting drug into this. Uh, but most, most of the, uh, the, the people that, I, that I, I've been working with are actually like young women. Uh, but yeah, I mean, there's certainly that too, right? So we also have young men that are that are being 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 pulled into this, and 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 that 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 I you know my understanding is that that there's there's dynamics as far as uh, young men and their 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 so socialization and 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 getting and 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 and, and, and their gender and, and and that and that sort of thing. So um, yeah. Uh, I, that, All right, so so boy, young so young males are 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 vulnerable as well and can be exploited. Even though what you're seeing right now is uh, mostly female victims and, and female survivors. So as I said, we have uh, we have a religious congregation or a parish who is concerned, uh, and you say, "All right, we want to do something about it." It's got to be more than write a check. Uh, there are also has to be uh, education. How about in, in terms of alertness? What should people b- be looking for? What should they be expecting to see uh, among someone who is either at risk or is already being exploited? Yeah, uh, so good good question. So, uh, you know, a, a, a couple of weeks ago I was I, I was helping one of my, my clients, right? I, I was helping her apply for jobs and and we happened to be at this hotel, for example, and and this guy, clear as day, he's a trafficker. I mean, there's no no doubt about it. Uh, and and he 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 came in, and it was just, he, he, you wouldn't expect this guy to be who he is. I mean, I know who he was, but uh, and, and he came in and, and he walked this young woman to a room, and he walked back. He went out one of the side exits, came back with another young woman, and he did that four or five times while I was sitting there. Uh, so. Needless to say, I didn't have her fill, finish filling out the application, but so and so. There's a, a lot of different. There's a lot of secrecy involved. There's a lot of a lot of movement. A lot of uh, you know being closed off and being isolated. So that isolation is certainly uh, a huge part of this. And, and then I imagine too, there like, there would be physical signs. You know, uh, a young person with. With bruises or, or injuries that they couldn't uh, that they couldn't explain, would that be part of it too? That would be part of it, but oftentimes you'll see that that, they're, that, that these these people that are being being exploited, uh, you know, that they're also they'll wear inappropriate clothing for the for the season. So, for example, in the summer, they'll be they'll be wearing coats and, and hats and gloves to cover that up because they don't mm-hmm. and they, they don't want you to see that because if they someone else sees that and points it out. And their trafficker will will beat them even more. And, and, and on top of that, so and I, and I failed to mention this in the previous segment, but a, another part of this is, is that uh, whilst being being trafficked, oftentimes the, these young young people that are being brought into the into tra- sex trafficking are, are are getting addicted to to different drugs, and that's sort of seen as a, a leash for them, right? If you know. Now they're addicted, and now this is a way for the traffickers to help control them, and, and so that's another another symbol of, of well, it's a sudden a sudden addiction out of nowhere. Well, but you know that that's certainly a sign. See that that brings us back to the issue of of the borders again. 
uh, a porous border facilitates not only trafficking in human beings, but it also uh, facilitates the the arrival of of illicit drugs as well. And that's that's a topic for uh, another time. Uh, again, let's continue with our thread of uh, churches and, and congregations. They say, right, we're, we've educated ourselves. We have to do more than write a check. Uh, we, we're being alert to the signs and the Simpson, symptoms. What about prevention? Yeah, so prevention, uh, we have to do candidly and frankly, as a church, we have to do a better job of catechizing. Uh, we have to do a better job of of teaching uh, our, our young families how to be families and, and how, how to set family structure up. We have to do a better job of that. And, and that's where it starts ultimately. I, you know, I, I, the, the majority of people that are being trafficked are, are, are coming from places where there's not fathers, uh, homes that where there's no father, and, and where we're or where there's abuse, or where the family structure is just broken down. So that, that's, that's part of it. And, and so we need to do a better job of catechizing, and we have to do a better job of, of helping our, our, our people understand the family structure and, and having a solid, healthy family structure. Well, you know, the, uh, the tradition of the church, uh, you know, going back to the time of the Holy Family, is that family life is meant to be a school of love where people are, are safe and nurtured and protected and cherished and learn how to care for one another and put their own selfishness aside for the sake of the family, uh, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, if family life has bottomed out, then the most basic building block of, of human life is missing from society. We shouldn't be surprised then uh, when when this all goes uh, when this all turns sour. So Charles, what do you think of this suggestion? One of our, our listeners had suggested that if we want to restore family life as a way of protecting vulnerable children, we've got to say out loud all over again, as if for the first time, uh, the truth about chastity. That if you want to have healthy life and you want to have family life that's loving, you have to start with uh, with chastity and, and saving sex for marriage. What are your thoughts on that? Uh, well, yeah, that, that's a part of the building block of a healthy, thing, a healthy family. The building block of uh, mom and dad. You know that they're that they they save save themselves for each other, and that 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 that, uh, that they're totally unified and in love. Uh, so yeah, so that's, that's certainly the foundation, and you can't go wrong with chastity. Uh, but unfortunately, in our in our society, right, we've made. We've made virginity a disease, uh, and and that that's that's this weird uh, a discussion for another time. But uh, <laughs> well, you know. yeah. I, I know that there's some suggestion that if you're a virgin until you're you're married, somehow you're developmentally delayed, and you need some sort of cure. Uh, for that, and that leads to all sorts of mischief and, and tragedy uh, as well. Um, how about the the spiritual aspect as as a congregation? Um, would you say that you know to fight against trafficking, we have to be prepared for spiritual warfare as well? Well, yeah, certainly. This is this is the the, the attack of our, of our enemy, right? Uh, this is certainly. So yeah, so uh, like I was saying, we have to we have to do a better job of catechizing. And, and 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 we have to be we have to be praying. We have to be saying the rosary. We have to be going to mass and 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 being being totally involved and getting involved actively in our parishes. Well, you know, Saint Bernard of Clairvaux said the highest motive of love is to is the love of man for the sake of the love of God, and and that includes you know, all the children who have been brought into the world who deserve to, to be welcomed and deserve to be cherished and deserve to be protected. And I think that aspect of human life um, has to be restored. And for all the talk we have nowadays about social justice, if we're silent about a social system that makes children inevitably vulnerable at risk, then we're going to have some uh, explaining to do. I'm wondering what your thoughts are on that. Yeah, so, you know, again, uh, look, we, have, we live in a culture and, and in a time where, where 
we, we teach our kids that everything's about me and me and my meanness. And it's just, it's not healthy, it's not true, and, and, and so we have to do a we have to do a better job of socializing our kids and, and to, and to the healthy, healthy places. All right. And, and uh, spiritual life requires moving not only beyond me and my meanness, but worship involves uh, more than getting get together all of us to celebrate us and all of our usness. Uh, it, love of God requires love of neighbor. When we come back, we're going to talk about what individuals can do on a practical level to be alert to human trafficking and to prevent that scourge, and we want you to be part of it. We want you to get on the line now and call us at one 511 5483 Text us the same number, one 511 5483 Stay with us. We'll be right back. This is Franciscan Media's Saint of the Day for November 29th. Today we celebrate Pope St. Clement I. Clement of Rome was the third successor of St. Peter, reigning as Pope during the last decade of the first century. He's known as one of the Church's five apostolic fathers, those who provided a direct link between the apostles and later generations of Church fathers. His first epistle to the Corinthians was preserved and widely read in the early Church. This letter from the Bishop of Rome to the church in Corinth concerns a split that alienated a large number of the laity from the clergy. Deploring the unauthorized and unjustifiable division in the Corinthian community, Clement urged charity to heal the rift. Today, many in the church experience polarization regarding worship, how we speak of God, and other issues. We do well to take to heart the exhortation from Clement's epistle, Charity Unites Us to God. It knows no schism, does not rebel, does all things in concord. In charity, all the elect of God have been made perfect. Rome's Basilica of St. Clement, one of the city's earliest parish churches, is probably built on the site of Clement's home. History tells us that Pope Clement was martyred in the year 101. There's more about the saints along with inspiration and Catholic resources at our website, saintoftheday.org. From Franciscan Media, This has been Saint of the Day. This is Father Jacek Mazur. Please join me in a prayer honoring Our Lady's Immaculate Conception. O God, who by the Immaculate Conception of the Blessed Virgin Mary, you prepared a worthy dwelling place for your Son, we beseech you that through her intercession we may be purified from all sin. Amen. You're listening to the Station of the Cross Catholic Radio Network. Call in to the Catholic Current this hour at 1-877-511-5483. Shortly after the show, visit our page for the Catholic Current at thestationofthecross.com. You'll find a link to today's episode page where you can view Father McTague's show resources and today's podcast. Praise be Jesus Christ. This is Father Robert McTague of the Society of Jesus, your daily host for the Catholic Current, where we plug into the power of Jesus Christ and His Catholic Church. You're listening to us on the Station of the Cross Catholic Radio Network and the iCatholic Radio app, where we proclaim the fullness of truth with clarity and charity. Our difficult topic today is human trafficking. Our expert guest is licensed clinical social worker Charles Bauer, director of Freedom House of San Francisco. If you're just tuning in, you should know that at the top of the hour, we talked about the nature of human trafficking. We talked about its ill effects. We talked about its many causes. Uh, In the last segment, we talked about signs and symptoms and ways of prevention and what can congregations do. Uh, uh, religious communities, parishes, etc. In this segment, we're going to talk about what individuals can do. And friends, I want to point out to you, if you're aware of someone in danger, or you yourself are in danger, there is help available. You can call 1-888-373-7888. That's 1-888-373-7888. Or you can text the message HELP to the address 
be free. That's help to the address, be free. Charles, we have a caller on the line, Chris from Amherst, New York. Welcome to the Catholic Current. Thank you. Do you have I, a question Chris, for us, Chris? Oh, good, good. I, I have a, a question. I, I read an article, oh gosh, it must be over 10 years ago now, and um, I was living in Florida at the time, and I... It is a story about two high school students who befriended each other, and one of the students um, wanted they both they wanted to get a job, and so the, uh, one of the stu- one of the students said, "Well, I know um, a friend of mine has a cleaning business. Why don't you come over to this house at such and such time, and I'll introduce you." Well, when she went over there thinking that she was going to get a cleaning, house cleaning job, she was actually kidnapped. And um, I was just, I I mean, I was floored when I read the story. I just couldn't believe it. And she was actually, she, I I believe she was, because we know the story, I believe that she did, was um, captured somehow. I can't remember. And, um, but she was sold as a sex slave. And I was just wondering if this, I, I mean, th- th- this is someone that, you know, like here you're an innocent high school uh, student sure. trying to get a well, friend, and you get you right. a friend. The, the moral of the story is is that we, we have to keep our guard up. Chris, thank you for giving this opportunity for reflection. Charles, if, uh, if you're a parent, what do you need to do to keep your kids safe? Yeah, so, I mean, that, that story that we, we just heard is probably the most common story that I hear every day uh and that is that they they they'll they'll, they'll meet up with some they'll meet someone and they're and they're oh I, you know I, I know a girl that, that that left her house because oh i had bad grades and so she was terrified that her parents were going to get mad at her or punish her and so she ran away and a similar situation she got abducted into this into this this whole in, in the sex group uh and so what parents can do is, is we have to be, you know, obviously we, we need parents that are going to be firm and that are going to be disciplined their kids, but that they also have to be gentle and, and reassuring their kids that, you know, that, that because they got they bombed a, a test that they're, that they're they're not going to be punished for it, that they're not necessarily going going to be hated for it, rather, that they're not going to be uh, somehow be unlovable because, well, I, I bombed a, a math test. Right. So it seems that the first rule of family safely, safety is the kids have to be assured of of unconditional love, that no matter what happens, I can come home and, and we can work it out. What do parents have to do in terms of, um, you know, uh, screening their friends and uh, screening their social media access? What about that? Yeah, so uh, social media is another another huge one, and, and, and uh, I, I don't have a Facebook reason I, I i but i i would suggest uh until your kids are very keen shut them out of facebook but I, I know that's not reality for most people and they're not going to do that uh so I, again you know I, I i you have to monitor their facebook use and maybe limit it to to when when the entire family's present and make it on a public computer rather than giving everyone their own uh, their own account and then oh i'm gonna play with it on my on my phone and then now it becomes this again the secretive thing and uh, and so we have to monitor our, our children's social situations. We have to monitor them closely. And and so, for example, if my my you know your child is spending time with someone, you know, say your child is 15 years old and your child is now spending time with a 20 year old, well, that's a little weird. And you should be yes, it is. And and bet them and bet that person and and, and really get to know them before you allow your child out of the house to go spend alone time with in, in that sort of a scenario. You know, Charles, the, the healthiest, happiest families I, I've seen uh, do something very interesting. Uh, in a lot of families, unfortunately, the social circle of the children, selected by the children, becomes the frame of reference, and then parents and family and church become kind of the loyal opposition and the competitor for the child's attention and affection. But in the in the happiest, healthiest families I've seen, the gatekeeper between the child and the world is the parents, and the parents 
introduce successful sane adults and their happy healthy children and the the family socializes together uh, prays together and there's a sense of we're all in this together and kids get to see oh if I fl- uh, if I fly right then I can be a happy healthy adult like this person who visits my family and hangs out with my parents and who has healthy kids do you think that's that's a good model that children that parents from the get-go need to be the gatekeeper for their kids yeah I, I think that that's, that's exactly right I think that families should be the gatekeeper and and and, and so families shouldn't so, for example, every night you should be having dinner with your family, and it should, mm-hmm. and you should probably make it a good rule that your cell phone should be in another room somewhere, uh, and that you're actually socializing and not just you know sharing sharing some common geography. Uh, and this is this is a, this is a part of family life that has fallen apart, right? That we we have oh we're going to watch TV together. Well, why not? No, why not actually sit down and 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 and, and get and know each other and and and, and socialize. So yeah, that that's a part of it. That, that's huge. And then, of course, also families uh, have to pray together. Uh, they have to families worship together. Have to pray together. And in most of the studies, I've that, seen that the best predictor for a kid keeping the faith is to see their father worship regularly. And uh, yeah, I, I so, think that that can't be overlooked. Yeah. So growing up, you know, I I, uh, I, I, I was going to mass. I was going to church, whether I wanted to or not. And, and I said, well, I don't want to. And my father said, well, you can't always get what you want. And he would sing the uh, the, roll, the old Rolling Stones song <laughs> to me. And, and and he said, you're going. And I don't care if you like it. You're going to love it. And now I love it. So there's that. Well, Charles, we, we've got just under a minute left. If there's someone who's listening who who is in danger or is at risk, what do they need to know? What do you want to say to that person? Uh, well, uh, you have value. You have intrinsic value. And, and and there's help out there. You can come to, if you're in the Bay Area in San Francisco, please come find us at the safe house. Please go to the local authorities, uh, and that being the police. Uh, you know, speak up, and, and, and we can help you. That's right. If you're at danger or you're at risk, you're ready to give up. You have worth, you have value, you are made in the image and likeness of God, and there's someone in the Catholic Church who wants to help. If you're in danger or know someone who is, call this number, 1-88-373-7888, or text the message HELP to the address be free. I'm Father Robert McTagg of the Society of Jesus here at the Catholic Current. Join us Monday through Friday, 5 to 6 p.m. Eastern. Tomorrow we have a special program addressing the question, Is Society Falling Apart? Our fresh guest will be renowned scholar George Weigel. Through the intercession of Our Lady of Mount Carmel, may God our Lord protect you from all harm and every evil till you reach the happiness of heaven. In the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit, go in peace and please pray for me. Thank you for listening to this podcast brought to you by the Station of the Cross. The Station of the Cross is a listener-funded nonprofit organization. If this podcast has helped you in your spiritual journey, please consider making a donation. Donations can be made through our website, thestationofthecross.com, or by calling 1-877-888-6279. You can also donate right through our free iCatholic Radio mobile app. Thank you for listening to and supporting the Station of the Cross, proclaiming the fullness of truth with clarity and charity.